and read a beautiful, beautiful chapter. In the book of Philippians, we read chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. I'm going to read the whole of this chapter. Because I'm going to lift my exhortation from different verses. In this book of Ephesians, uh, Philippians chapter 3. Beginning from verse 1. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. Amen. Amen. To write the same things to you, to me indeed is not burdensome, but for you it is safe. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. You may be seated. As we proceed, I'll, I will be lifting a few verses for emphasis on what I wish to share with you tonight. We are commanded in this scripture to rejoice. To rejoice in the Lord. Our happiness is supposed to come from the Lord. Not from money. Not from buildings. Not from anything the eye can see. In fact, those things that the eye can see, that the world can offer. Those who have no fear of God, and no delight in God have more of those things. They have them either directly or indirectly. They have them righteously or unrighteously. They have them crookedly or in any way. But God's people are supposed to base their joy not in the things that God has made, but in the God who makes all things. You believe that? Say amen. Yeah. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. That's the end of the story. Rejoice in the Lord. When anything comes to its final stage, that's the end of it, isn't it? At the end of it all, rejoice in the Lord. Disappointments may come, sicknesses may come, failures may come, success may come. Blessings may come. But don't rejoice in the blessings. Rejoice in the God that gave you the blessing. Praise the name of the Lord. It's like my son and my daughter today. It's their happy day. It's a day of joy. But both of them will be making a mistake. If my daughter here is rejoicing in my son, she got it wrong. If my son is rejoicing in my beautiful daughter here, he got it wrong. Both of them should be rejoicing in the Lord who has made it possible. Because without God, we can do nothing. Nothing. So our joy should be in our God. For those of us who know him, and he knows us, we base our joy and our rejoicing in our God. Because those who put their trust in him, will never be put to shame. Amen. Blessed be his holy name. Hallelujah. I'm thankful for all of you who put away everything today to be here with us, to be a part of the blessing of today. Amen. Amen. My son keeps calling. Well, daddy, remember my wedding? I said, I remember. Where are you now? I said, I'm in the most state. Oh, daddy's next week. Oh. I said, I know. <laughs> well, we're here now. God has made all things possible. Amen. Glory be to his holy name. Amen. Then we are warned in our joy and rejoicing. We are warned to be mindful of dogs. Dogs. If you spell God and spell dog, you see it's the opposite, isn't it? Yes. Dog, the characteristics of a dog is the opposite of the characteristics of God. See? The, the character of a dog is different from the character of God. And these characters are manifested in people. 
When people claim to be children of God, the character of dogs should not be seen in them. A dog bites, a dog devours, a dog vomits and eats his vomit. Am I correct? How would a child of God do such a thing? Oh, I will never do this type of thing again. And the next time he does it, there are men here who are beating up their wives, wounded their wives. There are wives here who are beating their husbands, bite nonsense out of their husband, and promise never to bite them again. But they bite again. Now that's a dog. You speak a word, you take it back. You cannot be trusted. See? It says, beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. People who come to you and convince you to do evil. Beware of those that have their joy in the flesh. Arrogant people, proud people. People who put themselves above everybody else. Selfish people, greedy people. People who teach husbands to treat their wives like housemates. A wife is not a housemate. A wife is a queen. Amen. A husband is a father, a brother, and a friend. A husband is not uh, a demigod. These are the things that evil workers teach you. You mean your wife did not do this and that? Look, the, if, deal with her the way I deal with my own. And then you copy that nonsense. Why? You are not mindful of dogs. You are not mindful of evil workers. They corrupt you. And you forget that your joy should be in your God. The character of God, not the character of dogs. We have seen wonderful marriages, televised, almost all over the world, with fantastic limousines, great feasts, great uh, actors coming to perform and entertain people. And then the wedding lasts for three months, and they go back to court and tear the paper, everybody go their way. It's a shame. The Bible says marriage should be honorable. In every aspect of it. You know why it gets to that disaster? The joy of the wedding, the joy of the marriage, is not in God. The joy is in how much money was spent. Who and who came to the marriage. How many cartons of beer was drunk. They hire cars. They, 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 they borrow money here and there. They won't do things the way they, they can manage. They, they owe everybody. And at the end of it, they are frustrated. It's you that made me do this. It's you that made me do that. And the wedding collapses. Be mindful of dogs. Today you're starting a brand new family. If God is not in this home, it will collapse. If God is in that home, it will not collapse. Amen. Glory be to our God. The Bible says the watchman is awake for nothing. If God does not watch a city, See, if God watches the city, then the watchman can wake up and go up and down because God is helping him. But if God is not watching the city, if God is not building the home, you're just struggling for nothing. Um, in verse 4, if your Bible is still open, though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinketh that he had reason reasons for which he might trust in the flesh i more circumcised in the eighth day of the stock of israel of the tribe of benjamin and hebrew of the hebrews as touching the law a pharisee concerning zeal persecuting the church Touching the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord 
for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but refuse or done, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Can we say amen? amen? Now, in the days of the Bible, in the days of St. Paul, when, the, when Christianity was young, and the scripture was being written, in those days, religion, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the publicans, and so forth, it was a pride to be a Pharisee. It was a pride to be a minister of the Pharisee organization. It was pride. It was powerful. Because that organization was recognized by the government. So much that Paul had the power to arrest and even kill people. He can go to the government, to the high priest, and get authority, and go to other lands and arrest people who are not Pharisees, who preach anything contrary to what he believed. He could arrest them, put them in jail, or kill them. We all know the story of Stephen. It was pride in those days. He was a lawyer. It was pride in those days to be a lawyer. He said, I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees. Circumcised on the eighth day, according to the stock of Israel. He enumerated everything that any man can be proud of. He said, if anybody has any reasons to be proud in the flesh, that he has more. But when the revelation of Jesus Christ came to him, he found out that all his worldly things are done, refuse, nothing. He didn't tie up his certificate and throw away. He didn't do things like that. But you know what? He discovered something superior to his certificate. He saw a zeal that is more honorable. A zeal based on love. Because the zeal of the Pharisees was based on hate. If you are not a Pharisee, you should die. If you are not a member of my church, you should die. That's what Paul believed then. He killed and killed and even killed Stephen. A saint of God. And here he says, concerning zeal, he was a persecutor of the church. There are people who are like that today. If you are not a member of their church, you are not a human being. You are not supposed to exist. You are supposed to die. That's a dead zeal. That's a zeal that God cannot tolerate or accept. So, when Paul saw the revelation of Christ, the love of God, then he found something superior to what he had. And when you find something superior to what you have, you drop that which is inferior. Praise the name of the Lord. If you were wearing a, a dirty, ragged cloth, and somebody gives you a brand new cloth, you remove the rag one. Is that true? That's what Paul did. And that's what he wants all of us to do. Paul says, if any man had any reasons to be proud, what is your reason for being proud today? Your business, right? Sure. You can be proud if you have a good business. If you have a good building. If you have a good car. You have a beautiful wife like that, my daughter there. Sure, you can be proud. But one day, when you come to meet Christ, you will find that you have nothing to be proud of. Nothing. The only reason to be proud is to know Christ. To know Him. The excellency of the knowledge of Christ. All these politicians today, they call excellency. They only call them excellency until they discover how rotten they are. And then they sue them to court and remove them as governors. As chairman of local government. As senators. But the excellency of God supersedes all this. Because when you come to know the excellency of God, it concerns you too. You become a partaker of that excellency. Glory be to our God. I pray to God today that each and every one of you that have come out from your homes and put away everything else that you're supposed to be doing today, 
will not return back to your houses without at least having an impact, a knowledge of the excellency of Jesus Christ. Knowing that that knowledge will help you now that you are alive. And will help you when life on earth is over. That's what makes it different. There are many religious leaders in the world that the world has known. But none has given his life for his followers. None. But Christ Jesus. For you to know that you can receive eternal life. It's an excellent knowledge. For you to know that your sins can be forgiven you. It's an excellent knowledge. For you to know that you can love your wife like you love yourself. It's a knowledge that is excellent. For you to know that there is no reason to divorce your wife. No reason for that. Your wife will offend you. Your husband will offend you. It is normal. It is natural. God says be angry but don't sin. Your wife can offend you but you don't divorce her. The Bible says God hates divorce. There is nothing that your wife has done to you that you have not done God 20 times more. And there's nothing your husband has done to you that you have not done to God 20 times worse. When you receive excellent knowledge into your life, it removes bitterness. It removes bitterness. Bitterness. It takes it away. Because you first of all judge yourself. If I have done this to God and God has forgiven me, why can I not forgive him or her? It's an excellent knowledge. Paul said, I have reason to be more proud than any man. But when I receive the excellent knowledge of Christ, then all those things that made me proud, I threw them away. Has that happened to you? People get 20,000 naira in the bank. Oh my God. If you see them walk on the road, they walk as if the whole world is on their shoulder. Take 20,000 to the market. You come back with a nylon bag. There's nothing in it. Nothing. You get 100,000 naira, you think you are heaven and earth. Change it to dollar. You see, there's nothing in your hand. These things are not the things that we should be proud of. We should be proud that we have gotten the knowledge of His Excellency. That knowledge will help you now on earth. And also help you when life on earth is over. Glory be to his name. If your Bible is open, let me read verse 10 here. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though I had already attained. Either we are already perfect. But I follow after. If that, I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do, I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the max for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Glory be to our God. Now, Paul says something here. I'm not yet perfect. But, I press on. He says, I have not yet apprehended or I have not yet gotten that for which Christ apprehended me. To apprehend is to capture. To capture. To arrest. To bring under control. Paul said there's a reason why Christ captured him. That he himself is struggling to capture that reason for which Christ captured him. Do you know why Christ captured you? Do you know why Christ brought you to himself? There are many people in the world. Some don't believe in God. Some don't go to church. Some, you know, make jest of the Bible. But why are you so interested in the things of God? You are here today because you love God. 
Not just because of these children. You are here because you love God. Why do you love God? Why did God put the love of God in your heart? It's because you are a citizen of heaven. Amen. I will show it to you in the Bible. I will show it to you. See? If you are outside Nigeria and you are Nigerian, once in a while you are homesick. Correct? Yeah, if you are not homesick, then you have lost your citizenship. Because you have friends and relations here. So it is. Spiritually speaking. Paul says, I have not yet captured that for which Christ captured me. But there is one thing I know that I am doing. I am forgetting the things of the past. My failures. My disappointments. My sins. All those things I did in the past in my ignorance. Persecuting the church. Being proud in the flesh. I put them all behind me. That I may know him. And the power that raised him from the dead. Yeah. Only righteous people think that way. Canal people think about money, 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 money. What is money after all? Life does not depend on money. It depends on God. See? Until you yourself have captured that for which God captured you. What is it that God captured you for? In the beginning, in the Garden of Eden, God ordained that you live forever. It, is, it wasn't the will of God that we die. It was the devil that came to the Garden of Eden and made Adam and Eve to break the law of God and out of annoyance, God pronounced death. And after many years, God saw what the devil was doing to his children and God spoke from the mouth of Isaiah, prophesied to the world, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God in the midst of his people. And he shall save his people from their sins. That's why he came. God wants to save you from your sins. God wants to save me from my sins. Until that is done in your life. Continue to press forward for the higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Blessed be his holy name. This my son and my daughter today have one or two things to put behind. What is it? Days of bachelorhood. Days of spinsterhood. You put those behind you from now on. Paul said, one thing I do. Forgetting the things that are behind. From now on you forget the life of bachelorhood. The life of spinsterhood. And you begin to walk like a married man. As a bachelor, you buy your gala. And buy your seven up. And come home. And then drink and just that's all and sleep off. But now it's no more so. You don't buy for yourself anymore. You buy for two. Is that true? Praise God. And my daughter the same. The days of spinsterhood is over. When you think of yourself alone. When you go to where you like to go. Come back when you want to come back. Now you have to have permission to go to where you want to go. You have to consider if I don't come back from this time to this time, my husband will be worried. From now on, your life will change. You have to put certain things behind you. Your dressing now will change. Because somebody cares. You don't dress to please yourself anymore. Your husband has the right to say, remove that thing. After all, you are dressing for me. Put on the other one. It's not more your little girlfriends and say, ah, you look so nice. Ah, that one is very nice. No, no. Your husband is to say it now. That's right. Your wife also has a right to tell you, remove that cloth, it's too dirty. They tell me that all the time. When I'm going out, I see somebody at the door. I know I'm in trouble. When mommy is around. You know? And then, after some, they just say, daddy, um, uh, daddy, please. Um, daddy, please. I know. What is it? Uh, that, uh, uh, all right. They take me inside. They say they have this one for me to put on. This one is dirty at the back. I said, well, I can't see my back. They said, well, that's why we're here. I said, okay. If I remove this and wear this, can I go? They say, yes. I remove this and I wear this. And I go. I don't say, well, who are you to tell me what to put on? My wife has a right to tell me what to put on. I am her husband. Good. I just spoke in tongues now. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You have to forget certain things. See? You no more come back home, take off your socks, 
put one on the bed, put one on the chair. The whole house is smelling nonsense. No, no, no. You have somebody to respect now in the house. You're getting married. Pressing towards the higher calling. You must help her make the rapture. She is to help you make the rapture. That is the essence of matrimony. People misunderstand this a lot. See? They think it's only having children. It is not only having children that God told us to get married about. If it is having children, do animals marry? Animals, do they marry? Do they not increase and multiply? Uh -huh. God never told any elephant, um, I'll make you a help made for you. No. Or any dog or any goat. Help made for you. No, you don't see such things. It's just increasing and multiplying. You don't see dogs get married. They don't care about that. No dog has a wife. Have you even ever seen a dog has a wife? Any woman is a woman. And any man is a... Any he goat is a he goat. And any she goat is a... But is this so with men? No, we have wives. We have children. The Bible said in the book of Corinthians that we should get married so that we don't fall into sin. Am I correct? In other words, you help your husband. Your husband helps you so that both of you can help each other to make the rapture. To please God. That's what marriage is all about. Helping. God said to Adam, I will give you a help that is good for you. God did not say, well, you don't have children, Abby. Okay, okay. Um, I'll give you a wife to give you children. What about the animals? Animals have children without marriage. Even human beings have children without marriage. Am I correct? Yeah. That is the essence of marriage. God said increase and multiply. The trees of the field, they increase and they multiply. Don't they? When the season comes, you see mango. The fruits will come out. Mango will be everywhere. Gova will be everywhere. When the season is over, it dries away. Because the word of God cannot fail. But only to man and woman did God say, Help! help if that attribute of helping the man helping the woman is not in marriage then trouble comes and takes over when love is no more there love always helps love endures love forgives love listen that's what love does love is not buy you a fine cloth that's part of it but that's not the most important thing love does you want to know what everything I can help the poor, but I have no love. He said, I am nothing, nothing. I can raise the dead. I can heal the sick. I can speak with tongues. I can do this and that, but I have no love. I am nothing, just a noise maker. Then he says, love is kind. Love is gentle. Love does not rejoice in iniquity. Love does not do these things. That's the difference between love and lust. How do we get this? And how do we do them? By the knowledge of Christ. The excellent knowledge of Christ. That's what teaches a husband. That he represents Christ. Not only in the world. But in his house. The excellent knowledge of Christ. Teaches a woman. That she represents the church of Jesus Christ. Not only in the world. But in her home. The Bible says a good wife. Builds her own home. Is that correct? Then a wicked woman pulls down her own house with her own hands. Why would she do that? She has no knowledge of Christ. If you have knowledge of Christ, you will build and not destroy. Love never destroys. Love builds. May God help us. Alright, look at verse 15 now. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be those minded, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. Nevertheless, as to that which we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me. And mark them which walk even as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, 
whose God is their belly and whose glory is in their shame who mind earthly things praise God as you marry today be mindful of the type of friends you keep and the type of uh, visitors you receive and the type of people you mingle with because there are people who pretend to be God's children but by their fruits they are not all they talk to you about is for their own interest the Bible says the God they worship is their belly not the almighty God we worship just their belly anything they can tell you to get something from you they tell you oh I saw your wife at a jail did you know that oh would you ah, it's not me that told you I just want you because you're my good friend that's why I'm telling you uh, I beg find me 200 naira there for transport you give him 200 naira uh, brother this is for transport now what about uh, you add another 200 okay thank you very much uh, don't say I told you bye bye and he goes with 400 naira in his pocket and then fire and brimstone in your house and when your wife comes back uh, sister where are you coming from um, I just went to the market uh, which market uh, the market down the road which down the road uh, I want to buy some I said which down the road why are you behaving this way you have had communication with evil workers people who are not God's children eh? whose God is their belly they have put fire in your home you can't trust your wife anymore your conscience is sold and the poor girl tries to explain you won't listen because your mind is corrupted already and that's the beginning of the destruction of the happiness of that home because your joy and confidence is not in God but in your friend that's what Paul is telling us here beware brethren he says mind those that walk as I have taught you and mark those that are causing problems and divisions among you there are many like that today hypocrites their mind earthly things earthly things earthly things earthly things that's all let's just be honest about it if a woman wants to be ungodly what can a man do there's nothing you can do just pray for your wife love her if she decides to be a godly woman it is between her and God if a man wants to be immoral a national he goat there's nothing a woman can do all he will do is say my dear wife um, my company sent me to Abuja I will be going to Abuja for official business for three days but he is in the hotel down the road with another woman how will you know you will not know why should you give yourself hypertension or high blood pressure commit your family to God God knows how to deal with his children he knows how to do it see if a woman says well I, I want to go to the market and she leaves the home and then she goes to the market and come back and you search her bag you search her this you search her that you are looking for phone number you are looking for address brother you are an immature man you cannot you you are wasting your time you are worrying yourself there's nothing you can do that's why God says his children should marry believers believers should marry believers because it is the fear of God that makes your wife obedient to you it is the fear of God that makes your husband obedient to you and he will not go to marry another person it's not you who are you you can't stop her you can't she will get her boyfriend into your own house and tell you it is her uncle you go and buy malt and bring cola and they will eat and drink and you will thank him for coming and give him transport money there's nothing you can do but if that woman is a God fearing woman relax brother you have nothing to be afraid of a godly woman the Bible says the price is higher than rubies higher than gold they are scarce you can't you can't find them here and there if you find them it is God that gave you just like this my son has got one it's God that gave you glory be to God finally look at verse 20 for our citizenship or conversation conversation there means citizenship 
our citizenship is in heaven from which also we look for the savior the lord jesus christ who shall change our lovely body lowly body and that it may be fashioned like his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things unto himself praise the name of the lord there are some people sitting here right now who are citizens of heaven Amen. you believe that Amen. i'm one of them they are citizens of heaven they don't just mind earthly things earthly things yes it's important for now but yet our conversation is heavenly if you are a member of the citizens of heaven pray that god will give you in marriage a citizen of heaven if you are a citizen of heaven and your wife is a citizen of heaven then the bible says the power of god with which he brings all things under his own control and command will be extended to you you have nothing to worry praise the name of the lord he will bring all things under himself and satan will have no part in your family glory be to our god let's stand together and read the scripture here Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse, uh, all right, verse 22. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. But that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here together in the sight of God and in the face of this company to join together this man and woman in holy matrimony which is commanded by saint paul to be honorable among all men it is therefore not by any to be entered into unadvisably or lightly but reverently discreetly soberly and in the fear of god into this holy state these two persons present come to be joined if there is anyone here that can show a just cause why they should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony do you now speak up or from henceforth forever hold your peace any objections no going Go. all right praise the lord all right both of you please listen but uh i will require and will charge you both as you will surely answer the day of judgment when the secrets of all hearts shall be disclosed if there is either of you that know any impediment why you should not be lawfully joined together in this holy matrimony do you not confess it for be it assured unto you 
that any couples that are joined otherwise than God's word don't allow, their marriage is not lawful. Well, the word of God allows two people to be joined, not three. Hmm? Any reason to stop? We can go on. Praise God. All right. But duly believing you have considered this solemn obligation that you are about to assume and that you have prepared to enter upon the same reverently, disgracefully, soberly, in the fear of God, I shall propose to you the marriage covenant. You will witness the same as you join your right hands together. You join your right hands together? All right. I'm going to read out the marriage vows here and if you agree with what I'm, I, I will read out you say loud and clear yes I will will you have this woman to be your lawfully wedded wife to live together in this holy state of matrimony do you promise to love and honor and cherish and support in sickness or health riches or poverty and will forsake all others as long as you both live by the grace of God, I win. I know you will. Amen. All right. Will you have this man to be your lawfully wedded husband? To live together in this holy state of matrimony? Do you promise to love, honor, and cherish? And support in sickness or health? Riches or poverty? And cleave thee only unto him... As long as you both live. By the grace of God, I will. Amen. By the grace of God, I will. Give him. Which one is that? Okay. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before God. Before God. And this congregation. And this congregation. I take you, say her name. I take you, Sister Juliet. To she be one, one able. Yeah, mention all of them. <laughs> so that nobody makes a mistake. Praise God. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. Before God. Before God. And this church. And this church. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token. As a token. Of my vow. Of my vow. To you. To you. That I will love. That I will love. And cherish you. And cherish you. As the word of God commands. At the word of God commands. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay. All right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Before God. Before God. And this congregation. And this congregation. I take you, say his name. I take you, Brachini Dumbata. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. Before God. Before God. And this church. And this church. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a token. As a token of my vow, of my vow that I will love you, that I will love you and obey you, and obey you as the word of God commands, as the word of God commands in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. We thank you for this beautiful day Amen. and for making this a success. Amen. Your children have exchanged their vows and the token of this vow. Amen. Lord, without you, they can do nothing. But with you, Lord, they can do all things. Amen. So we dedicate this marriage to you Amen. and dedicate these children Amen. that you will help them, O oh God, Amen. and bless them, O oh God. Amen. Bless the work of their hands and bless the fruit of their womb. Amen. We pray, dear God, that those around them will see the beauty of Christ Amen. and the glory of God in their lives. Amen. And all your children who are waiting upon you, we pray, dear God, that you will, in your own good time, bring them before you also to exchange their marriage vows. We commit these children to you, knowing, Lord, that everything committed to your hand is safe. 
Bless these children, O oh God. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 You can open the veil. Please, you may be seated. Glory be to our God. Please be seated. We will sing a song of praise. We will give our offering. Everybody. Come on, come on, give the Lord a clap of it. Our God is good. Praise the Lord. God bless you all. Please be seated. Once more, I want to thank you all for coming to be with us at this time and to be partakers of today's blessing. Go home and don't forget what God has told you. Tomorrow is Sunday. Please go to church. Don't stay home and sleep till 12 noon. And if you don't have anywhere you are heavily engaged, we want you to please come and worship with us here tomorrow. And God will bless you. Amen. We'll start our worship here at 8.30 for prayers. And then the Sunday school follows that. So please come, with, come worship with us tomorrow and you'll be very glad you did. Amen. Every Christian home should be a little garden of Eden. And let God be the head of that house. And if every man will realize and every wife will realize that God listens. He will always say something good about your husband. And something good about your wife. May God bless you all. Can two of you stand up please? Face the audience. Well. Praise God. Hallelujah. By the authority of the word of God, the Holy Bible, by the law of this country, as God's servant, I pronounce them husband and wife. Amen. <laughs> Amen. One other thing. What God has joined together. What about woman? Because it's women that put asunder nowadays. Oh. Let no man or woman put asunder. God bless you. Please be seated. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you all for coming. I'll be glad to see you all tomorrow. Tell your friends and neighbors who don't go to church to come with you tomorrow and God will bless everyone. Please, when we... Uh, I'm moving out. I want you to please sit where you are. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for this beautiful day. And for the journey message you granted each and every one. And for bringing us here to worship you and to receive today's blessing. We have come to the end of the first part of this service. As we move out downstairs, may we continue in your presence. We have blessed this couple in your name. And may they be blessed in Jesus' name. We bless everyone that has come here today. May they be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, when it's all over, may each and every one get home safe and in peace. Amen. For your glory and your honor. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. And the church says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Please be seated. All right. Can we have a song? Does my daughter have a song for today? No. All right, I can give you a song. Tuwaraya mama, tuwaraya mama, siya no mela. 
Onye Horu Jesus, Toya Mama, Seya Yume, 